the premier audio and video experience in the United States, this August 4th through the 6th. In Raleigh, North Carolina, Audio Advice Live is going bigger, bolder, and louder. Audio Advice Live is the best place to learn about the latest trends in high-performance audio, home theater, two-channel, turntables, or headphones. Meet with the industry's top experts, brands, and influencers to hear all the latest and greatest gear live and in person. Register to attend now at audioadvice.live. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Audio Advice monthly live stream and giveaway where today we are joined with some of our good friends over at Audioholics and Monitor Audio. We're going to be talking about a lot of things and... Uh, all things about monitor audio, speakers, home theater, two channel, whatever you want. Uh, but before we kick it all off, I want to invite you guys all again to uh, Audio Advice Live, which is here in about two weeks. So it's uh, going to be in downtown Raleigh at the Sheraton Hotel. It's going to be a massive event. If you saw the uh, recaps last year, take that, double it, and uh, <laughs> that's going to be the show. So everything from entry level turntables to, you know, six-figure home theaters to uh you know grand wagoneers whatever you can imagine it's going to be there so come check it out again august 4th through 6 we've got tickets still available so go check it out on our website but uh awesome well we'll get in with the introductions here so uh let's go around the horn here so mike tell us uh uh give us a little introduction tell us who you are what you do and this is a happy hour after all so what you're drinking cheers everybody yeah. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. I'm rocking a little a little tequila because it's still early here on the West Coast. But uh, my name is Mike Benedetto. I'm the uh, VP of Sales for uh, the United States for Monitor Audio and Roxanne. Oh, awesome. Well, I think Gene blacked out a little bit, so Michael will jump to you. Sure, no problem. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Johnson. I'm the Global Marketing Director at Monitor Audio Group and uh, been with the organization now for... Oh, seven years. So uh, great to meet everyone on here. Thanks for joining. Awesome. Awesome. And the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> oh, Gene, you're muted. <laughs> Gene De La Sala, Audio Hawks. As you guys know, we're coming on our 25th year of being online. That's how old I am. And I'm celebrating with Maker's Mark. I brought a gun to a knife fight. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Nick. I am the uh, lead home theater designer here on the e-commerce side. And I am drinking a beer from Steel Hands Tropical IPA. So cheers. But um, so we'll, we'll jump into we got a few things we're giving away today. So for those of you who don't know, this is a Q&A driven platform. So we do have a question or we have a prize for the best question. And we have a prize that's been our giveaway running all month. So to start it all off, guys, tell them what you can win for the uh, for the best question. Okay, so the best question, we're giving away a pair of uh, Monitor Audio Bronze 50s. Um, these are our um, more of our entry to mid-fi product, uh, a very popular product line. They're valued at $595 a pair. They feature a uh, five and a half inch mid-brace driver uh, with our CCAM technology. CCAM is our ceramic coated aluminum magnesium drivers. Um, that's one of our proprietary technologies, uh, along with our uh, one inch gold dome CCAM uh, tweeter, which Monitor Audio is very well known for their gold dome tweeters. Again, they're a, a $650 value or $595 value, excuse me. And uh, we are, I believe we're going to let the uh, winner pick their finish. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's a, it's a good prize just for asking a question. So we're looking forward to that. And then we also have the big door prize, which is what? Oh, the big door prize is our silver 207 G's. Um, these again have a, um, they're a retail value of $2,200 a pair. These are our, probably our most popular and best-selling speaker in, in, our, in our lineup. The Silver Series is, is well-priced. Uh, it punches way above its weight. Um, in the past, it's won best loudspeaker under 5,000 a pair, and they sit around you know, 22 to 2,400 a pair. Um, these will feature two five and a quarter inch, again, C-cam drivers. These are a little different in that we have our rigid surface technology um, it, it gives us a lot higher rigidity so we can have a lighter, lighter driver, but it won't distort, which creates distortion in your sound. The uh, 
the drivers won't flex because they're very strong based with the rigid surface technology. And again, it has a one inch gold CCAM tweeter as well. Um, again, it for very extended high, high frequencies. Again, we're gonna let you pick your finish. Uh, we, I love uh, the white, um, but whatever finish fits your decor, uh, we will let you guys pick. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you again for that and good luck to everybody out there. Uh, I don't know who's gonna win yet, so I'll get sent that here shortly. <laughs> so, so fingers crossed for everybody, but uh, jumping into it. So uh, yeah, we had audio advice live last year. Gene, you were there. Uh, yes. So this room that uh, you, you're familiar with the room they're gonna be in is the, the big Hanover two room where we had the GTZ 380 last year. So this year we're coming back again. We, uh, we stepped it up a notch got some new gear. So you guys uh, mind telling us what, what you're, uh, what you're going to be putting in there? Sure. I, uh, you guys stepped it up a notch. Last year's show was, was awesome. We were in a, a hotel room, um, which was our, was our first event with audio advice live. And obviously it was your inaugural one. So we're proud to be part of the first one. This year we decided to go bigger because man, the, the people back in Rayleigh in the UK have been very busy with product development we have a lot of new products. Um, a lot of the attendees are going to be um, happy to know that we're showing our brand new $90,000 pair loudspeakers called Hyphen. Um, these are going to be featured in Hanover alongside our reference theater product Synergy, which we're doing quite a system um, utilizing our own uh, proprietary CI integrated amplifiers as well. So we have a lot of products showing and then we will also have a pair of our, uh, I believe our Platinum 200s in, in a special room, um, which will be announced later because we might have a special guest there um, in the room. So we'll save that for a little later. Um, but yeah, we're really excited to be a part of this. I personally have been with uh, monitor audio going on seven years, but I've been doing business with audio advice for well over 25 years. So it's good to be back with them. Uh, I was with them with my old company and, and it's great to be with them with monitor audio. And we're so stoked about the event. And if you guys could make it in September or um, I'm sorry, August 4th through the 6th, that would be awesome to see you guys there and, and check out these, these hyphens are incredible. Um, we, we can't wait to show them. It's it's a, a big step for us. It's a big swing, and we feel like like we we hit it out of the park. And Michael will talk a little more about that um, later on if those questions move towards hyphen. Yeah, well, let's let's let's. I just want to show everybody these speakers because the whenever whenever I first saw them, I think they were it was before they were released, and you guys showed us a few little pictures of them, and I was just like, it looks like uh, it looks sci-fi almost. I love a funky looking speaker. I love these. So how, how, how large are they? Like, what are they? Generally They're actually uh, relatively diminutive in terms of their height. So we purposely designed them to fit into conventional spaces. You know, not everyone has enormous rooms. Um, I think particularly in the US, you probably have a little bit more real estate than we do in Europe and in the UK, our houses tend to be a bit smaller. So the design team um, really focused on making something that was more room let's call it room friendly um and they had a vision a blank sheet of paper essentially um the chairman was just very keen for them to sort of let rip as it were to sort of just design something that was gonna really put monos audio on the map you know the brand is 50 years old it was our 50th anniversary and they released the concept 50 which was the precursor to hyphen uh, and it was really a test bed for the R&D team to sort of try out. I've seen quite a lot of messages about sort of metal driver technology. Um, so maybe we can touch on that slightly as we talk about hyphen, because it really takes the metal driver technology to, you know, an, an, another step forward. And we've tried to innovate quite significantly. So just taking a step back, Monitor Audio was one of the very first audio brands in the world, actually, to start developing metal cone drivers um, because ultimately with paper cones and you know which are still made today let's face it, it it's the conventional way of, of making a speaker um, there's a lot of flex and movement particularly if they're being driven hard um, now there are ways of 
trying to prevent that with doping and things like that on on you know glues and special materials onto the paper but we felt that metal was really um lightweight really rigid and uh, under extreme pressure you know remain more pistonic and as we developed so the first metal dome tweeters uh, and drive units were sort of very early 80s on our stuff and that's uh, where the, the, the gold sort of started to come in uh, to the range and it's it's been a a visual identity for the brand ever since. Um, but the materials and the way that we've designed those um, has developed significantly. So we've utilized a uh, ceramic coated aluminium magnesium now for a number of years, but that has developed, it's got thinner, it's got stronger, it's lighter. We put, um, certainly for platinum, so the, the PL200s that will be at the show, uh, they utilize a rigid diaphragm technology. So we, it's, the C cam is the front part of the drive unit cone. Then we have a Nomex core, which is like a honeycomb, lightweight honeycomb, which adds real stiff rigidity. And then behind that, there's Kevlar weave to make it really, really strong. And that's what you find on the four force cancelled base drivers in hyphen. So these base drivers, rather than face outwards, they're facing inwards. And hyphen is a strange shape because actually the guys wanted to make a point source. Um, and that means that all the sound radiates from one point, very big wide dispersion, very spherical in terms of its sound stage performance. And to do that, you need to get the tweeter and the mid drivers as close to the bass drivers as possible, arguably. Ultimately, what you want to try and do is like dropping a stone into water with all the ripples coming out mm -hmm. and not being affected in any way. That's the ultimate point. So, um, the, the the thing that we've utilized within hyphen and what makes it so interesting is that we try to push back the uh we we call it an mpd so it's a micro pleated diaphragm transducer so it's like a ribbon tweeter essentially it gives you very good um linearity in the horizontal and the vertical so you get a nice wide presentation of the the sound with six two-inch mid-range drivers are, are placed around that as close as possible. And they're completely flat, so you don't get any diffraction. So the, the interesting thing is, with something like a dual concentric driver, where you have the tweeter in the middle of a, uh, a mid-range driver, you know, the mid-range driver is still moving, and the sound waves are coming off and propagating across the front of that cone, but it's moving. So you can get sort of um, distortion and intermodulation effects happening. So with six individual smaller mid-range drivers, they still have the one. So you get a very, very broad sound stage, but you've got a very linear and flat face for the tweeter sound waves to come off from. So you get very little sort of in, uh, distortion and uh, intermodulation. And it, it, it actually gets the waveguide as well. So when you listen to Hyphen and that, the first way uh, presentation, so the audio advice presentation, you're going to hear, you know, something that we hope you, is really going to impress you. It, 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 for some, for a pair of speakers that are relatively small, they're just, um, they're about a meter and a half tall. They're not enormous. They weigh, um, they are extremely heavy. <laughs> about 60 inches tall, 58 inches tall, I believe. And they weigh about 350 pounds each. Yeah, well, we're yeah, we're definitely looking for. I'm not looking forward to carrying those. Uh, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and carry those up uh, up at the second yeah. floor there. But uh, <laughs> no, it's going to be awesome. No thanks, thanks. thanks. Well, actually, we'll get Gene. Gene's going to actually hold him over his head and carry oh, him yeah. uh, up the <laughs> okay, stairs. We'll get youth men to help me out with that. <laughs> <laughs> they are they are significant in terms of their weight, but of course, what that you know, we don't use a wooden cabinet. Obviously, on conventional speakers you know that, that, that like pieces of furniture these are like pieces of design furniture yeah but they're made out they're constructed from a thermo formed mineral acrylic stone uh that sounds very fancy um but it's a very dense sort of resin that comes in sheets it's then heated up and formed over the shape and it's a clamshell uh it's basically then cemented together the two clamshells are cemented together and they've got lots of internal ribs and and the things to make that as rigid as possible. And it is really dense. That's why they're so heavy. Um, 
the, the, the base drivers essentially are connected together facing inwards, as I say, in a force cancel so that, uh, position. So you've got four lots of eight inch drive units in each pair of, in each speaker. Um, so we've got eight base drivers across the two pairs. We've got six mid range drivers and the tweeter. You've got 11 drive units in each speaker. What that creates is, as I say, an enormous presentation of sound. Um, there is, virtually, there is virtually no cabinet resonance or vibration because of the density of it. Um, there's only four bolts that actually hold. It looks like a clothes peg, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> I, I won't say that too loud to the design team, but it, you know, it, it looks like a little bit of a clothes peg. It's held together with just four bolts. So we have three bolts going into the back base drive units. It clamps everything together. It, the, all the connections are invisible. Um, I think you've got a picture, Nick, of oh, some of the, 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 the parts. Um, it's very minimal in terms of, there we go. So you've got, yeah, just the, the, the screws there. You can see them. They're the things that are holding it all together. It's uh, really minimal. But, you know, don't be put off by that. These things are absolutely <laughs> incredible. That, are those all the screws that are in the, uh, yeah, in the speakers? Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm excited to see them in person. That's, yeah, that's the big thing. And so we, you guys are going to have a killer two-channel experience a, uh, in, a, in a killer home theater. So, yeah, just to kind of recap, you guys are doing, what's the configuration that you're doing in your in your room for, for the theater portion? So the theater portion, um, we're doing a 7.4.4 system, I believe, uh, full-on Dolby Atmos with our Synergy product, which is Synergy. I don't know, Nick, do you have any images of Synergy? I do. Let me see. Okay. Synergy okay. Uh, is roughly, it came out in, uh, I think we launched it in April or February or March of this year. Um, this is your, your reference theater, high decibel output system, um, utilizing CCAM technology, the MPD tweeter that uh, Michael just described to you guys, a lot of the same base driver technology you'll find in, in Hyphen and in our Platinum products. So, you know, the beauty of monitor audio is we're unique in the fact that every screw, everything in our speaker is designed by us and built for us and built by us. So we don't go and use a driver from somebody else and, and, build a box and put these drivers in. These are all designed from, from the ground up. And um, the same is true. So even going from our our, our bronze, so our, our levels go bronze is where we start pretty much in the US with our traditional box. Then we go to silver, we have gold, which you'll see gold are behind me here, okay? And then we go to platinum and then platinum obviously after platinum is hyphen and um, and Synergy rides in there a little more, but Synergy, because of the, the high decibel ratings of it, obviously bigger mag magnets on the back of these things. Uh, they are heavy boxes. They're meant to be built into a reference grade theater, all THX certified. Along with that launch, we also launched our, our amplifiers to go with that. So we offer a 750 by four, which can be bridged to 750 by two, a 125 by four, and a 60 by four. Um, all IP controlled, all DSP. Uh, you can change every little thing between uh, brick wall limiting. Uh, you can set volume maxes. There's a lot you can set in these amps with the input and the output. So we can actually compensate for sometimes a weaker preamp, but most of our customers doing these systems are going with trin off is what we'll be showing at Audio Device Live um, with our amplifiers. So with a big, big Sony projector, I don't know what model number it is. I'm it's not the, a- uh, Yeah, the GTZ 380. Yeah, so we're gonna have a, a, with Kaleidoscape I believe is in there and I believe there's one other manufacturer Matt in there. Yeah. yeah, and um, it's gonna be a, a killer, killer system. and. And attendees are going to be able to go from listening to Hyphen, which is our our two channel, the pinnacle of what we do, and then go in and then hear a phenomenal few clips of movies. Uh, we can't wait to show this stuff off to you guys. It's it's so exciting to have this product. Um, back to Synergy, there's only four modules. There's a 300, which is a tower. 
Um, and the unique thing about the 300 is we can move those drivers around based on the height of the screen. So if you have a lower screen, you can move that mid-range tweeter driver down below and then have your two subs above or vice versa. Um, you can also lay these things in a horizontal position and rotate um, your mid-range tweet. Uh, which is great. Then we have a 200, which is just a smaller version of that. The 100s are really meant for smaller rooms, but mostly you're going to use those for your sides and your, your rear channels. You can also use them for your effect channels above if you need to. Um, but because again, we talk about how all of our products have that same tonal signature with the same technologies, they do pair well with our, our platinum in ceilings uh, as well. So you have a a great balance of, of product and it's it's with a manufacturer. We have great profiles for those. Obviously, when you do a room, you want to tune it to the room, but the profiles will will help us where we can, you know, maximize the driving of the, for instance, subs are the most critical thing with our amplifiers. So driving the subs, they're they're dialed in to drive our subs, these amplifiers. So we're excited to show it. And then I don't want to take away from Platinum, too, because the new Platinum range is, is again, phenomenal for the price points. You know, we have reps across the country, and some people say for $15,000 a pair for the, the 200s in Platinum, they don't have anything under 25 that touches it. So that's, if I could say that about monitor audio, we perform over our, you know, at any price point, whether you're in the bronze range, you're going to get a better performing speaker. We like to say about 50% more of the cost and we're still in the ballpark. Um, and, and that's, and that's what we like to build. That's a, one of our philosophies is, is not making it so expensive. Yes. Okay. Hyphen's an expensive speaker, but we have all that same technology all the way down our line. So based on your budget, you're going to find something from monitor audio that, that, that you're going to love. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to it. That's for sure. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. Just to recap, we're going to have the full monitor, monitor synergy series, their hyphens. We're going to have the Sony GTZ 380, which is absolutely killer. Mad VR, Kaleidoscape, Stuart film screen, some chairs in there. So we're, uh, we're looking forward to it for sure, but let's, uh, let's get jumped into some of the questions on here. So we got, uh, we got a few in the chat. I'm just going to go ahead and take it easy on us guys. <laughs> Hey, I think you guys are pretty technical. <laughs> so somebody said, what are the uh, the advantages? Uh, what advantages do the dimples on your mid bass, uh, mid slash bass cones offer sonically? Yeah, actually, um, we were just saying to Gene earlier, um, his one of his last reviews, actually, and we'll change that. We'll get some speakers to Gene to review some of the new stuff. But one of the last reviews he did for Monoset was on the GR10. I'm pretty sure that was the first time we started to add dimples to the sea yeah. cave. Um, and if you think of a golf ball, that's probably the easiest where the airflow over that driver cone, uh, you know, like a golf ball going through the air, it, it kind of helps the flow of air over that cone as it starts to move pistonically and under, you know, a lot of power. Um, it also helps to keep it more rigid as well. You know, it just adds a little bit more um, strength, sort of, you know, strength to the cone. So it's, it kind of does two things and that's been evolved slightly um, and the shape of the circles and the size of the circles and the patterns actually all make a considered difference to the way that the airflow moves across the surface of the cone. So that's the reason and it's constantly being looked at and it's a small detail, but it's actually a really important one. And it's all we're always striving for those small little you know, improvements to sound quality. I, I always like to think of it like a Formula One car. It's like they look the same sort of year in, year out, and there's like these aerodynamic changes. It's kind of like we're always striving for that small percentage of increase of performance every time. And, uh, yeah, it's really exciting. So, yeah, that's the reason for the dimples and that development. Awesome. Yeah, Gene, you're going to be measuring some of these speakers soon, aren't you? Yeah, I think we're getting in the 500s. I know uh, Shane Lee's going to do the video for us, and then we're going to have James Larson measure it. And back in the GR10, from what I remember most about that speaker was it was the immediacy of the mid range. Like it just, to me, it was very vibrant, the vocals, especially listening to female vocals on that speaker. And I've, in the past, I listened to the original Silver series, 
they weren't my favorite speaker at the time, but when I went to the GR tens, that was like a quantum leap forward. And that's when I became a monitor audio fan. And I just, we haven't been reviewing your products and we need to change that. Yeah, we, we will. And, and, you know, these, these golds behind us, again, smaller drivers, but because of the rigidness, the amount of low end these produce without a subwoofer are, are pretty incredible. And people always come into our rooms when we're at shows and probably have the same effect with the platinums when they see them is like, okay, where's the sub? And, and it, it is because of that rigidity. And, and as Michael says, the air movement, um, which really, really helps a better, better sounding speaker. Yeah. The other cool thing is you guys have a lot of diversity in your flush mount products. I mean, just the yes. build quality of them and everything. And the fact that you're now specking Max SPL, I didn't see it on all your models. I just was kind of glancing at your website the other day. And I'm like, that's a useful spec for integrators. So they know, you know, how much speaker they need for a room. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Tell the, uh, tell the audience what the, uh, what Max SPL is basically saying. Basically, how loud it'll play with low distortion, right? I'm, I'm sure you guys have a, dis a distortion threshold that you have to meet in order to give it that spec. We do. And one of the things that we're very keen to do um, is actually just be really transparent and honest with our um, recording and specifications. It's not always like that when you look at specs of different different things, different speakers, different, different companies. They tend to, they can record and... You know the plus or minus figures can be quite significantly different um but our technical director is very keen to be as honest and, uh, and transparent as possible because ultimately you know it's um if you have the right system you know that that sort of thing matters and um you know there's no reason to sort of gloss over that or, or bend the the truth as it were so um you know we we are as an organization very uh, keen to be uh, delivering, you know, a product that we can stand behind and feel very confident about. And, you know, we we don't want any sort of cloak and dagger stuff. You know, it's like actually that if you want to buy a monitor audio product, you can feel confident that, you know, the, the information that you're getting is absolutely on point so that it'll give you the best possible, um, you know, information to go and select your source and your amplification and all that sort of stuff so that you can build a really fantastic system around them. So... So a quick question I have for you, Michael, is the hyphen, is it a passive design or do you, or do you have an active option for it? It's, it's a passive design. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> we have talked about active. Um, I mean, as a, as a, a, a category, I guess, um, you know, we, our sister brand Roxanne, uh, is a British, uh, electronics brand that make turntables and streamers and amplification. Um, you know, there is a, and the same engineering team, by the way, uh, that our R and D team, about sort of 43 people work across our acoustics and also our electronics and our software, hardware development. Um, they're, they're one team. So the discussions that those guys have about active, um, you know, is, is very interesting. So all I'm saying, Gene, is watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> And, and just if I could add on to that, you know, Michael mentioned the 43, you know, engineers uh, pre pandemic, we had 18, only 18. So the the investment and, and again, one thing we should talk about a little I'd like to always talk about is, you know, monitor audio is still a wholly owned company. I believe we're one of the only few big, you know, big speaker manufacturers that aren't answering to VC money or we don't run our we don't run our business on spreadsheets. We use our we use our spreadsheets a lot, but but um, you know these guys have the reins to do whatever, and and you're going to see that at Audio Advice Live with the hyphens. This was just a hey guys, we want to build a speaker. We don't really care what the end cost is going to be as long as we can manufacture it and manufacture it with our quality in mind. Let's do it and. Uh, you know, they did a, a phenomenal job. And as, and as I said, I don't know if it was on the stream or or why we were getting ready for the stream, but the amount of product that is coming out of there, I mean, two days ago, we just launched our, our Anthra subwoofer series, which is killer. You guys could see that on monitoraudio.com. Unfortunately, we can't get it for Audio Advice Live, but um, you guys will you guys will have it in store probably soon, not thereafter. But um, and then Gene had mentioned mentioned a lot of our flush mount product. I mean, we have right now we currently have about 110 custom SKUs, which 
is very high for a traditional box manufacturer. And again, what you're getting is all that trickle down technology. So at any price point, our, our in ceiling start at about $225 each, and we can go to $5,000 up to five, $5,500 in wall. And now with Synergy takes us to that next level. But again, same tonal signature throughout the line. And they've done a great job of, of really raising the bar and delivering performance. And not always performance doesn't always mean price. And, and, and that's one thing that I love about Monitor Audio. And that's why I love this company so much. And I love our future because we, you know, Michael came on board, I want to say a year ago. Yeah. 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 So I did a stint. Just you did a stint before, but anyway, he he's back and 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 his new team. He's added members to his marketing team. And you guys, when you're on on the website and LinkedIn or Facebook or any social, you'll see a lot of the videos that they're producing. And everything is just we're just continuing to take those steps up. And we strive for perfection, knowing we're never going to hit it. But every every day we 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 strive to hit it. <laughs> We got pretty close with hyphen. Yeah, no well, doubt, no doubt. We'll be the judge of that. No, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm excited. I'm excited to check it out. Well, speaking of striving for perfection, we've got another question here. So, all right, what changes were made in the new and improved Silver 200 7G? So, so again, I'll Michael, if you don't mind. I mean, Please. you know, as again, as Michael Michael mentioned, you know, hey, this is this is where you know, uh, silver was, this is where we're going. We just make minor refinements to it to improve the performance and not necessarily always um, increase the pricing when we do that. So we have to be cognizant of both of, you know, how it fits in the marketplace and, and thinking of our customers and, and budgets and that sort of thing. But I, I would say most of the, the innovation there was in, in a, a redesign of the waveguide and then Again, another redesign of the the RDT technology and the CCAM driver, changing the dimples. Maybe dimples change just a little in, in those drivers, but they make a huge improvement. And I think the one thing that separates us, and again, I don't know the behind the curtains in a lot of places, but with with software now, we're able to design and test speakers before we actually manufacture them. So we're actually improving like in other aspects of as, as technology advances, we can test a lot of those speakers to see where our deflection is, where our weaknesses are in a, in a, in an idea or a driver, and then continue to redesign that. So um, we're always looking to in, improve the product, change some electronics and crossovers, that sort of thing, maybe adjust finishes a little to, to meet, you know, decor, because we know our wives are an important factor in, in this decision as well. Um, but, um, you know, we always try to every three years, you know, they're little changes, but they really reinvent themselves when you really sit down. And my biggest measuring tool are my ears. And I think that's what most people should look at and, and not get caught up in all the specifications and, and really have a good listen. Yeah, I just will just add the engineering team spent an awful lot of time as well um, choosing uh, crossover components, and that will be a significant difference between the old and the new. Um, obviously, the you know the engine, the driver, you know that that has significant rework underneath the the, the skin. So, as Mike said, they might look slightly similar on the outside, but actually underneath that, that, that drive unit cone, the, the, the motor system's quite significantly changed. Um, the, the crossovers have an awful lot of work done to them. <clears throat> Monitor Audio is, is known for its craftsmanship, its finishes of its, its cabinet. That's something that we're very proud of. We're a leader in metal dome driver technology. We have great craftsmanship. And as Mike sort of rightly said earlier, the, 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 the price of the products is very competitive in the marketplace and you get um we feel a, a fantastic you know price versus performance versus sort of quality you know it's it's when you stand them side by side and you look i mean the new platinums if you get a chance to go to audio advice you know and you look at the, the products up close even the the the, the 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 you know the thx ultra certified uh, synergy series goes into a wall the, but the and you don't see it, <laughs> but the, the the design detail is like incredible. The, the 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 attention to detail is something that we're very proud of, and 
we really want to drive home that pride of ownership. So yeah, it's there's there's a lot of factors. Uh, the design and the R and D team and the marketing team all work very closely together on delivering the very best possible products. So. Do you guys mind if I ask a quick question? I'm not trying to like be part of the contest. I just have a curiosity question. Yeah. All right, Jim, you get, we, you, we're going to give you a set of speakers. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's going to get us, but he has to send them back when he's done. Yeah. <laughs> I was just looking at your your range. I'm looking at. I'm interested in the lower budget stuff and just yeah. the drives mm -hmm. that you guys have made over the years, like the bronze 500, for example, I think it's cool at a budget speaker that you're actually giving eight inch cone drives yeah. and some real bass response and high sensitivity. Um, you say that the max SPL and that's 116 dB and you rate it as a pair. So I just want to be clear if that's one, if you want to rate it as one speaker, you just subtract six dB. So it's 110 per speaker, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. still screaming loud for a I don't they're, know how they're, they're an absolute uh, weapon actually um and i think that the, the thing is with bronze and there was a comment someone made about sort of actually sort of building a system the, the nice thing about monitor audio is that you, know, you you can do that i mean bronze silver gold platinum hyphen you, you you've got an ability to come into our our, our family or our ecosystem and, you know, depending on, you know, the available budget, you can start off with something like bronze and as small as the little 50 bookshelf, which is beautifully made. It sounds great. There's a lot of technology that's trickled down into the bronze series and you can build a system over time and then you've got a path to upgrade over time as well. And, you know, you, you know, Monitor Audio does have a sound and of course, sound is very subjective. But there was another comment about you know how do you, you know, what you what are you trying to achieve? Ultimately, we are just trying to achieve the very best possible reproduction of what the artist intended in the studio. It's as simple as that. We don't want to add anything or subtract anything. Um, we want the the recording to be as honest as possible. And I think you know that even our lowest end speakers have the care and attention and the same people that are designing our most expensive speakers designing those and the method and the theory and the design the transparent design philosophy that we have within our organization doesn't change whether it's working on electronics whether it's working on you know uh, integrated speaker solutions or beautiful kind of two channel or kick ass kind of you know surround sound 5.1 or dolby atmos stuff you know it, it, it all has the same uh, mindset, the dogged determination to deliver the very best possible performance at those price points. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we try to cost reduce technology so that we can bring it down into those ranges. So yeah, the the, the bronze floor standards, you, you know, with eight inch drive units, it's it's a lot of speaker for the money. And uh, that's a gr it's a great range to start off in the, the, the Monitor Audio brand. And, and Gene, real quick, if I could just add on, when you go to the silver, we're probably one of the few manufacturers still in that price point that when you do our wood finishes, you're getting a book match veneer still. So we still do a, an A and a B on our serial numbers. So they're off consecutive rolls of the log. You're getting the same grain patterns on both where most have moved to a melamine or a, a wrap, a vinyl wrap. We're still using uh, veneers in in that range, which, mm -hmm. which I don't know of anybody else who's doing that at that range. So uh, again, I think you're going to get a little more um, bang for your dollar, dollar of their product. And then to circle back, I missed the point on the, you know, what's new about the 200s. It's the same with every version of speaker. They sound better. They're more detailed. Um, they're, they have more dispersion. They're going to, they're just going to have more transparency in the sound to Michael's point. We're just trying to recreate what the artist and the producer wanted to make that track sound like, and we're trying to reproduce it as close as possible. Well, you may have just answered this question. <laughs> yeah. You teed it up or I teed it up. So oh, I win the speaker. Uh, we win the speakers, Michael. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> but it was it was saying what's the most noticeable audio difference between the bronze and silver uh series speakers? If Michael, if you don't mind, and you know, because we we pitch this to our dealers all the time. And and the beauty of what our dealers love the most about monitor audio is if you think of uh if we took a platinum speaker and put two sheets over it, right? If we put two sheets over it, now it's gonna sound like a bronze speaker. We pull a, a thin layer off. 
and now you're going to get silver. Then you pull that layer off, you're going to get platinum. So as you go up in level, the tonal signature, if you will, will stay the same. You're just going to get, again, a lot more detail, a lot more lower end, a little more bass, a little more less distortion, a lot more detail. So you'll start to hear more nuances in tracks that Oh, I never heard that before. It's it's almost like going from an MP3 to, you know, going up in streaming quality. You know, you get, oh, I heard a drumstick fall to the ground. You're going to start to hear more of that as you go up and it's just going to be a little more detailed. That's the sales pitch. I'll let the marketing guy uh, give his pitch. <laughs> well, look, I mean, you're, you're quite right. There are steps up in performance, and I and I and I always come back to sort of like a a, a car analogy, a performance car analogy. You know, if you were buying into a Porsche, you would, um, you know, as you go up the range, you would get bigger engines, more, more, you know, like higher quality materials, you know, you know, more aerodynamics, and 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 that's kind of you know that application is the same for our loudspeaker ranges. And as I said before, you know, we we are trying to trickle that technology and cost reduce it into getting the very best materials into those ranges. So as you go up the range, of course, we have more money to spend on the development and on the design, on the materials, on the crossover components, on the cabinet structure. Um, so, you know, bronze is a, a veneer, uh, a sort of a vinyl, a vinyl wrap. Then you silver, you've got real wood veneers and the quality of that is significant. Um, but then you've got all the drive unit technologies and all that sort of stuff. So there is a significant performance increase that you would hear. And of course, it's not just about the speakers, it's about your source, about your cables, you know, and, and stepping up your amplification. But the nice thing is, as I said before, you can do it over time. And, you, you know, replacing speakers on, on your existing system could make a significant difference to your enjoyment of, of that system. So sometimes upgrading the speakers is a, is a good way to go to get that immediate hit of difference. And then, you know, you can look at other components within your system. Mm -hmm. um, but um, they're all great. It just, you know, the, 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 again, I'll come back to, it It comes back to the money that you, you, that you have available to spend. And, um, you know, you won't be disappointed uh, with something like bronze, but you, you, you know, if you taste silver and you think, oh, hang on, there's something to shoot for. You know, it's, 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 it's good. And it's, that's what we want. We want to, we want our customers to, to get excited about, you, you know, being part of our brand family and, you know, we would love to retain you and for you to be part of that. Um, because as Mike said earlier, we have an awful lot of, uh, of product coming and uh, we're very passionate about what we do. So yeah, we want to share that with you or as many people as possible. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask one more question? Okay. Mm -hmm. So your pl your platinum line has an AMT tweeter, and I know for years it's been a challenge to get good dynamic range from AMTs, and luckily they've evolved over the years. Mm -hmm. Did you guys have to do anything specific to your version, or you're not using? Obviously, you're not using an off the shelf. What made you transition from a dome to a to a AMT in your second okay. flagship line? Basically, this is definitely a, a sort of technical director question, but I'll do my best, Jim. So, um, <laughs> you're, you're Michael. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay so yeah so we had the, the 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 sort of you know the 25 mil gold dome tweeter that was that was in a lot of our ranges um the guys felt that there was better performance now i will just reiterate nothing that we develop within our speakers is off the shelf as uh, as mike touched on earlier we design develop in-house in essex in the uk we have a sixty-seven thousand square feet facility um, and we have a, a team that work there and we have a team based in China. We, we used to manufacture um, all of the stuff where we are currently based in the UK. Uh, we now do that in China. We, we hand build hyphen, by the way. Um, it's the first speaker that we are now engineering, designing, developing, building in the UK. So we're really proud of that. And that comes back under the roof. And we've got technicians that are building those, hand building those for our customers. So that's really great news. But back to the point. So um, the, 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 the typical AMT, um, I believe that they went to that because they could get higher performance and actually combining that with a smaller mid-range drive unit so that it had a... They, they did that so that they could extract a very linear kind of ex, um, uh, 
sort of bandwidth performance from the two working very, very to, uh, yeah. closely together. Um, so that the mid-range drivers had a wide bandwidth, but were covering some of that of the tweeter bandwidth. So it's a very smooth transition between the two. And I think that they've um, they worked very hard on the development of the um, the, the, the the sort of the, the the infrastructure that sits around that 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 AMT that, trend, that MPD um, t- uh, ribbon tweeter essentially, um, so that it, it, it just they can just extend. Um, the directivity and the performance of that in a horizontal plane and a vertical plane. It's probably not the best way that I can describe that technology. Gene, your question is a bit beyond me. It probably takes our technical directors to come in and really nail that one. But no, I've uh, heard those at Cedia a few years back and I was really impressed by the sound of them. They're very transparent, very open and airy sound that they project uh, that they projected. Creates a wider uh, sound field and it gives us better directivity than a standard round tweeter. Yeah. Um, and it just, you know, they feel that they can maximize the sensitivity going through sort of like an AMT and they just get greater performance from it. I think that's essentially what it is. So when you start moving up through to the gold, to the platinums and to the hyphens, you're getting, you're getting that technology within there. So I yeah. hope that's clear. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's that's pretty good, Michael. But increasing the number of the pleats, it reduces the overall height of the driver. So we're able to to make that tweeter play flat to about 60 kilohertz. So yeah. it, it really adds a and obviously we can't hear that, but but you can still hear remnants of that throughout the sound. And and to, to Gene's point and Mike's point, Michael's point is it just plays, it just there's a lot more air in it and it adds that that sense of height to a you know to a track so um it's again proprietary design but based on that technology um again we we love doing everything in house awesome well there's a here's a little bit more of a general question that we've got on here Let's see. Uh, are there different or different consideration when building a surround system for listening to music versus listening to home cinema? I get this question a lot, and I want to I want to get your take on it. Yeah. Well, again, when Synergy came out, we're like, oh, this is a theater product. But when we we started to do installs, and we're lucky enough and fortunate enough to to fly around the country and listen to some of these systems, and because we're using a lot of the same driver technologies, right? Um, when you put this thing in two channel mode, they image like a, a tower speaker. And so they are very, very musical. And, and again, that's, that's where, you know, again, it's always uh, subjective or objective where do you do more theater? Do you do more two channel? And that's where you make decisions. But, you know, we sell a lot of our platinum in walls, which again, are the same drive units in our platinum towers, or we have a equivalent for our gold, the, the gold 200s that you see behind me, we have an equivalent that goes in wall and those will image like a box speaker. They're not going to play down as low because they're in a wall, but obviously if they're in wall and you're doing a theater, you're going to have subwoofers as well for your, for your low effect channels anyway. So, so again, yeah, there is some consideration, but the biggest consideration that I would always go with is, you know, go with an audio company who designs good speakers because it'll translate well in the theater where some manufacturers are really good at theater, but don't think about two channel. If, if that makes sense to you guys, I, I think that would be my best advice is pick the sound that you like, whether it's ours or somebody else's, you know, all of us have different flavors and um, you know, go with something that sounds good in, in music mode and most likely their center channels will and subwoofers will translate into good theater as well. Um, but if you're going to build a purpose built theater, then you might want to go with a, a reference system like our Synergy system, which which does both very, very well. Awesome. Any other thoughts? Your flush mount products, they have back box options. They do. Yeah, they do. Yes, we, we have a range called control performance, which is a, another unique thing of, again, of innovation that, that we consistently strive for is, is having innovative product. The back box is actually built in and you could retrofit the back box. Nice. So, um, which again, people will do a theater, do a room, and then all of a sudden decide, oh, that child's room or the wife's above in there and a lot of music is escaping. Well, you just 
pull the other ones out and you put these in same opening and um this wasn't really again at audio Vice live sorry guys but we are in the process of at cedia this year in september we're launching a brand new custom line that oh it's going to blow everyone's mind because because we're our current custom is probably again seven-year-old technology and now we're bringing it up to new drivers uh, again custom doesn't change as much as as our box product does um, but we like to do incremental changes. We did an incremental change three years ago in custom, a very minor change. This is a complete redesign from the ground up. We're, we're getting rid of probably 40% of our, our actual assortment of custom for this new line, but we're actually gonna have more solutions in that line, the way these guys design the product. So some products will have multi-use. OK, so they can be used as an FX speaker or they can be used as a as a, um, a two channel speaker in, in, in ceiling. OK, uh, so so there's a lot of technology in that as well. So um, so, Gene, your original question was about the in wall. Yeah, about I mean, a lot of in wall speakers, they don't include or even have options for back boxes from other mm -hmm. brands. And I think that's an oversight I mean, it's something really important i think yes and, yeah. and we we do make an enclosure as well for all of our speakers it's uh that can go in pre-construction as well but again if you're in a situation where you're doing a retrofit a room where you you didn't realize you're going to have that much bleed through to the next room you mm -hmm. could pop them out and put these in no <laughs> no problem at all yeah, and I definitely think it depends on the end ceiling speaker too, or in wall for that matter. It's just because when it comes into back boxes, some speakers are designed with you know infinite baffle. They want a certain amount of volume behind the speaker. And mm -hmm. so people will just throw a you know generic thin back box on there and then wonder why their performance took a hit. Yeah, um, exactly. So yeah, if you guys make your own, then yeah. Yeah, and, and that's why we call it control performance because it's yeah. it's a known entity that depth of that that enclosure is going in now as we move into our higher end in walls uh we have they're all control performance mm -hmm. um but in this new line we have a basically uh it's going to be a synergy 100 that basically is a a medium size speaker um which we spec the amount of back box you should have so when you're doing systems with that these are going to be in the 15 to 1700 dollar each speaker where mm -hmm. your custom integrator would design a back box in the wall for that. And we give them the proper dimensions that they need. So we didn't do control performance in our hire because people are paying for that extra performance. We wanna give them that performance. Awesome. Well, let's uh, see what other questions we got here. Looks like we got one from Dan. It's, uh, uh, well, how was the off axis response with the AMT tweeter? <laughs> well, that's a good question, Dan. Um, <laughs> it's listen to it and you'll find out, I think. Yeah. Um, it, no, yeah. yeah, go on, Mike, do you want to go for it? Yeah, I, I'll just say from a, a layman's point of view, I can't give you the technical, the, the actual measurements and specs, but I can tell you when when we're listening to these, which also these golds have a, an EMT, AMT tweeter as well, um, but when we're setting up at shows and we're walking around the room, you're still getting that imaging. It's not like you need to be in the sweet spot to really listen to these speakers. There, there is a, um, a wide soundstage that, that because they're so flat and they can go so wide, you do get a bigger soundstage with these products and they're not so pinpoint, need to be pinpoint accurate where you need to be always listening in the sweet spot. And if you're off access, it's going to sound funky. You're, you're not going to get that to an extent. What that extent is really depends on the room it is, how many pieces of glass you have, how many openings of doors. There's a lot that goes into that. But um, as far as off access listening, for sure, um, these things from, from silver, even bronze, I mean, they all image very, very well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You, you said you were running a four channel in your own living room, right? For a while, you didn't even have a center channel. Yeah, exactly. I was running a, a 4.0 system. And, and to, to Michael's point about mixing and matching, you know, I have a $7,000 pair of loudspeakers here, but I'm running radius uh, rear channels because that's all that would work in my room. 
and and tonally i don't you don't really discern a difference and with with rear surround again i was running a 4.0 system um with with no subs and we had plenty of bass um and uh, I finally went to a center channel because I didn't really care for the mixes that were happening in Netflix. And a lot of these streaming services were always like, what did they say? Rewind it back, you know? <laughs> so put a center channel in just to get a little more so I could boost that center channel to, to get a little more detail as far as uh, uh, voice. But that's more of the mix rather than if I'm listening, if I'm watching a Blu-ray, I don't have that issue as I do with streaming services. So I don't know why that is it's just the way it is for me but uh mm. but i mix and match our our most expensive with our least expensive and and it, and it works great of course if you watch a christopher nolan movie you can't hear the vocals and regardless <laughs> of the center channel or not exactly i think he, he do dunkirk because uh yeah that one was a tricky one yeah i know there's actually a, there's a really good vox video about how dialogue's getting harder and harder to understand and, and yeah it really is christopher nolan is notorious for that he's like you know he says he designs things for you know the best theaters yeah. <laughs> and, you know i'm playing it in a you know i don't think yeah. any of us have bad sound systems by any means no. and it's still hard to understand but, yeah no i have a program i have a button program on my remote that is cc so when when we're having a tough time you just hit the closed caption and you read it mm -hmm. um so but uh but yes to your point gene it is it is kind of tough with his with his films <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know if you guys discussed the uh, the waveguides. The last question, sorry, going back to it, was about the uh, the off-axis response. And mm -hmm. your, your waveguides, I'm sure, uh, you know, help with that quite a bit. Do you kind of know what general angle you're, you're looking at on your speakers? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the waveguides have been improved considerably, particularly on the, the, the AMTs. Um, the guys really want to, as Mike touched on, sort of create a very wide sort of dispersion and, uh, and directivity ultimately. Um, in terms of the, 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 the specification of those or the details, I, I'm afraid I, I don't know the exact sort of specs, but essentially, you know, they, it's just like the, there was a question actually that I was reading about um, on the the, the the actual grill patterns over the gold dome tweezers and does it make a difference? And it actually does. Um, those those sorts of things really do um, impede or help the sound dispersion come off the high frequency. So it's really important. And the guys spend a lot of time and effort getting those patterns right so that the sound waves can propagate out and you know, we really can sort of maximize the, the, the sound stage and maximizing the sensitivity of the, the, the tweeters. So. Awesome. And Nick, I'm just going to say for any more of really in-depth technical questions, the bonus is if everyone goes to audio device live, we're going to have one of our, one of our technical gurus who actually designed a big part of hyphen will be there in person. And if you well. can stop and have at it because, uh, he definitely has a lot of a lot of knowledge of the product and and uh next time uh i'll get off and i'll let michael and our technical director or somebody else do it so they can really get into the the nuts and bolts because it it is it's i'm lucky enough that sometimes i get to share a beer or a drink with these guys and you know they man they educate me so much on, on products it's amazing yeah, we're we're definitely looking forward to it. Uh, I'm sure that I'm going to get you know anytime I go to one of these shows, I ask a million questions myself. I'm uh, I'm bad about it. And speaking of questions, uh, Gene's going to be on one of the panels that we're on. Uh, we're going to have a uh, have some panels there with a little bit of Q and A. We're going to modify it a little bit from last year, but we're going to have uh, a fair amount of panels there. So come prepared. Well, I'm going to send, I'm going to ask him some zingers then too. Because <laughs> he, he put Michael and I on the spot today. So. Oh no! <laughs> awesome. Well, let's see. Gene, did you see any other quick questions you want to ask? I think we got time for about one more before we do uh, giveaway answers. I mean, um, so how many demo rooms are monitor audio? Is it just going to be the hyphens are going to be in the same room as the as the cinema series as well, or is it good? Yeah, they're a, they're a little divided. So we're going to actually do a uh, basically have two presentations. We're gonna let them hear all the details and then we're gonna blow their eardrums away. That's basically the, the plan, no. Um, they're gonna hear hyphens and, and, and see them, be able to see them up close, listen to them. Um, we have a killer system that Nick helped us put together and Billy over at Audio Advice. We're gonna have 
I believe we're driving them with Mark Levinson 50th anniversary product. Sweet. So um, these do require horsepower, but obviously at 90 grand, you know, you're not going to put a four cylinder in a Ferrari, right? So um, you're going to, you're going to want some, some horsepower. So we're definitely going to have some horsepower there. Um, and then in the next room, we're going to have a lot of horsepower with our, with our synergy system. That's a reference theater that can go up to 130 plus dBs of, of sound. So, uh, um, it can get loud and I'll bring again, my ear plugs. I, yeah, I no, you, we, we, we don't do that to people. Um, you know, obviously I'm a somewhat a musician I mix for a living. So, or not for a living, but on the side. And so hearing is definitely always important to me in our demos. We don't have to play it loud to make it sound good, um, but it will go a little loud uh, for sure. Um, but, um, but yeah, no, we're excited. And then the platinum room, we're going to have some vinyl playing in that room. Um, and like I said, we might have a special DJ there, which will be announced a little later on. We're excited for that. And, um, and yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be an exciting show. We're, we're stoked. Awesome. Well, we are looking forward to it, guys. Well, I think it's about that time to start announcing some of the uh, giveaway winners. Uh, so for the best question, I uh, this is one that I think sparked a, uh, a lot of interesting conversation. Got Anthony Perez here with what advantages do your dimples offer in the mid-base cones? So, uh, Anthony. Uh, All right, Anthony. Out, yep, yep. Reach out to us. We'll, uh, we'll get your prize set up, and uh, we're looking forward to it. And now for the big question or the big giveaway winner let's see here hold on let me get a drum roll while i find this <laughs> oh i don't play drums sorry <laughs> all right uh we, we'll make it work all right so we got john christie from stanton island new york for our big ticket winner uh oh, so right. yeah reach out to us guys we'll get you set up with those and uh yep. hope you enjoy your system yeah, for Thanks. sure. Uh, pick your finish and then let us know how uh, how you like the speakers, guys. Congratulations. Um, Nick and Gene, thank you again for for the time. This has been this has been awesome. It's my first broadcast with you guys. So we appreciate the time. Um, we're excited again for Audio Advice Live. It's going to be a phenomenal event. And I'm hoping most of these guys, I know there's some people long distance, but I tell you what, you're going to see some really good audio in in, in in the three days that it's going to go on, um, it's worth the trip. Oh, for sure, guys. So yeah, definitely definitely come out. This is uh, this is going to be one of our biggest events. Monitors one of our uh, one of our probably seven or eight big theaters there. Uh, but I'm I'm hoping you guys are going to be the best. So, <laughs> but uh, again, thank you everybody for coming out, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at Audio Vice Live. Awesome, looking forward to it as well. All, All right, right, thanks, thanks guys. Yes, take care. All right, bye bye.